more about this telescope than I do, but I'm going to say a few words and then turn it over to him to show you how it works. You can see this is not like the others. And that's what happened between 68 and 97, is that telescope design underwent a tremendous change. So, you look up here, these are the mirrors. Oh, wow. There are 91 of them. They're, each is a one meter flat to flat hexagon. And there's an example out there in the, in the visitor's gallery that we can see later. So those 91 mirrors are pave a spherical surface to make a mirror that's 10 meters, 400 inches, by 11 meters, 440 inches, possibly um, in size. And so the light comes in, and the opening is over here somewhere. There it is there. It's not a slit. It's a hole. And there's a cap on the hole that moves over that leaves it open. And why it's a hole will be apparent in a minute. So when you look out through the opening, light comes in, comes off all these segments, goes up here, and goes into the prime focus. Well, it goes first, it goes into the uh, wide field corrector system is a bunch of stacked mirrors that takes this light from a spherical mirror to make bad images. Spherical image. It's cheap to make bad images. It takes the light through these four nested mirrors and corrects it to a nice sharp image. And it produces a field of view that's 22 arc minutes across, which is about two thirds the size of the full moon. To give you a sense of how big a piece of the sky it sees at once. And then we can do work on any of the objects inside that 22 guard and field of view. So there's, after the, the wide field corrector, there's a, an instrument package that can put uh, fibers, optical fibers. Have you ever seen one of these things that has these fibers that come out of a base and you turn it on and the ends of the fibers are red and they're green and they're yellow. They're just sending light through those fibers. Well, that's what we do. We put the fiber on the target, bring the light down to a fiber bundle. We can go into the basement, come down and go through this pintle bearing here, down into the basement where it goes into a spectrograph. And there are a couple of inches of spectrographs down there. And then it can be analyzed. Or if we're doing the Hobby Everly Telescope dark energy experiment, the light goes into one of these saddlebags. This one's just like that one. And each one of these, in the end, will hold 76 spectrographs. And each spectrograph holds, how many fibers is it? 200? About 200 fibers feed into each spectrograph. So 200 and 156, it tells you how many spectra you get. Over 30,000 simultaneously. And in that experiment, they look at this 22 arc minute piece of the field of view, and they just point blind, point it, take 30,000 spectra, whatever's there, even blank sky. <clears throat> and then they do another field, and another field, and another field, and eventually, a big piece of sky up in the constellation Ursa Major, big difference, is observed looking for extremely distant galaxies, galaxies that are 10 or 11 billion light years away. And they're going to measure the speed at which those galaxies are receding from us. And so in the end, they'll have a volume of space, a 